Hello and welcome to the Power Tools for webinar series. I'm Kinkini Banerjee, the Coalition Relations Director at USBC, and I'm so glad to have you join us for this session. This series, the Power Tools series, is organized as part of USBC's technical assistance and capacity building support for our network of state, territorial, tribal, local, cultural breastfeeding coalitions, community-based organizations, national nonprofits, regional nonprofits, basically anyone who's wanting to strengthen capacity to advance policy systems and environmental solutions in the first food field. We hope that these sessions bring ideas and inspiration and the webinar announcement emails are sent through um, many of USBC's channels. <clears throat> All of the sessions are uh, free and to streamline access, uh, the webinars have been set up as a series. So once you have registered, you automatically get uh, reminders, announcements into your uh, mailbox. And um, we understand that it, it's not possible for everyone interested to attend a session live. So the sessions are recorded and archived so you can watch them at your convenience. And all the materials uh, for this session and the access and archives to past sessions are on the Power Tools page, which is www.usbreastfeeding.org slash power dash tools. And if you can, if I can go back, you'll see that this is our um, web page where it is. And it also, all of the announcement come out through the coalition learning connection as well. And if you, um, to find the Power Tools page on our uh, homepage, uh, if you don't have the direct link to it through the email, um, you can go to our website, which is www.usbreastfeeding.org, and you'll see the tabs across the top. Um, click on the one that says Learning Collaborative, and you'll see a drop down menu, and um, you'll see all of the four webinar series that USBC offers. And this one is in the Power Tools webinar series. So if you click on it, and also in the chat box, uh, you will see a link to today's slides. Because we have a large number of attendees, um, attendees are in listen-only mode, which means that we can't hear you. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. We encourage your input very much. So please share your comments and questions as they come up for you during the session. And um, you can type these into the questions box on your webinar control panel. And let me show you how to do that. So on the right side of your screen, you should see a control panel. Um, if you don't see it, it might be minimized. So click on that um, orange tab with the white arrow and the control panel will pop out. And if you scroll down below the audio section, you'll see a tab for questions. Uh, click on that blue tab and it'll open up a, a text box for you to type in. <laughs> so, and during the session, we'll be posting a couple of um, uh, links. Um, so keep keep an eye on the um, on the chat box as well to see the links as they come up. And again, if you have any audio or tech problems during today's session, please. Um, let us know through the questions box or send an email to coalitions at usbreastfeeding.org and a member of our staff team will help you. And that brings me to today's uh, topic, building relationships, a key to the rise of our indigenous breastfeeding communities. As you might know, November is Native American, Native Hawaiian Heritage Month. Uh, during this month, the histories and continuing invaluable contributions of American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian people in the United States are recognized. We honor the rich diversity of, of these communities, their cultures, their traditions, and language, and we also learn how heritage intersects with health. Today's presentation is based on um, a Native Hawaiian proverb First, the foundation, then the structure can be built. We learn how vital it is to build relationships and learn that when we seek to influence fellow learners, our patients, customers, 
we must get to know them first before we can ask them to make change. Once we seek and understand where they come from, what is truly important to them, and hear their stories, we bring strength, knowledge, and power into our shared space. Um, so during today's session, we are going to hear about the Native Hawaiian practices, challenges, successes of the recent Indigenous breastfeeding counselor training that was held um, in Hawaii last October. I am delighted to introduce today's presenter, Amber Kapua Makamai Okaleni Wong Granite is a native Hawaiian born and raised on the island of Oahu. Amber started her breastfeeding career as a WIC breastfeeding peer counselor. She's currently the WIC breastfeeding coordinator at the Waimanalo Health Center. Uh, she's also a prenatal care coordinator and the, uh, at, for the Health Center's Women's Clinic. Amber is a childbirth education, educator and also an occasional labor doula. She found that supporting mothers through their entire pregnancy and labor process helped them have, a good, have, have, helped them have good breastfeeding outcomes as well. Amber partnered with Breastfeeding Hawaii Coalition and the Waimanalo Health Center in bringing the indigenous breastfeeding counselor training to her state and communities. Her ultimate goal is to create an indigenous breastfeeding coalition in Hawaii and offer education and training in breastfeeding with an emphasis on cultural trauma, as well as native um, Hawaiian cultural practices. And Amber's uh, goal and aim is to give the native Hawaiian people re the recognition they deserve at the national and international levels. The first food community first met Amber and heard about the vital work she does last June at the 2019 National Breastfeeding Conference and Co Convening, where she was honored with the prestigious Emerging Leaders Award. We couldn't be more honored, Amber, to have you share about your work today. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Welcome. Amber, your um, audio mic, mic might be muted. Am I there now? Yes. Sorry about that. OK, let me go back to doing that. OK, there I am. Um, OK, aloha my everybody. Uh, mahalo for um, being here um, to listen to my presentation um, about the just the huge importance of building relationships um, to help to um, empower um, our, our indigenous breastfeeding communities. Um, my name is Amber Kapua Makamayo Kalani Estelle Wong Granite. Um, Kapua Makamayo Kalani uh, means precious flower of the heavens. My father's name is also Kalani, so um, precious flower of uh, Kalani as well. Um, and so before I start the presentation, um, I wanted to share um, a traditional Native Hawaiian oli with all of you. Um, we use oli to tell stories of where we come from, um, to give thanks, and to set up our sacred space uh, wherever that may be so that we can have good conversation, um, good listening. Um, I'm going to say the oli three times. And this is it right here. It's called Na Aumakua. And um, what this Oli does is it's going to acknowledge all of our ancestors, mine and yours, um, acknowledging um, our spiritual protectors, as well as asking for um, strength and knowledge and wisdom, growth um, and power within all of us. Um, when we do Olis, we often like to bring someone with us. Um, or when we, when we do anything, usually we like to bring somebody with us, whether that's a person who's deceased or whether we want to call the spirit of somebody um, that's um, still alive. <clears throat> so when I do Oli, I like to bring my um, grandmother, my father's mother, um, who raised seven boys and didn't even bat an eyelash. She was just amazing. Um, and then I also like to bring the spirit of uh, my kumu, uh, my kumu la ola pa'au um, of uh, traditional Hawaiian medicine. I like to bring her with me. She's kind of my guide and my mentor as I've, um, and on this journey. So please feel free to 
bring an ancestor, a kupuna of yours, um, while I do this, Oli, and while I do this presentation. Um, okay. Na uma kua mai kala hiki a kala kau. Mai ka ho ku i aka hala wai. Na uma kua ya kahina kua ya kahina alo. Ya ka a kau i kalani. O ki ha i kalani. O we i kalani. Nu nulu i kalani. Ka holo i kalani. E ia ka pula pula a o na hui ha na i waiu. E malama o ko ya mako. E ulu i kalani. E ulu i ka honua. E ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike. E ho mai ka i kaika. E ho mai ke aka mai. E ho mai ka mau popopono. E ho mai ka ike pāpālua. E ho mai ka mana. Nā au mākua mai ka lā hiki a ka lā kau. Mai ka ho oku i a ka hālā wai. Nā au mākua iā ka hina kua iā ka hina alo. Iā ka a kau i ka lani. O ki hā i ka lani. O we i ka lani. Nū nulu i ka lani. Kā holo i ka lani. E i a kā pula pula a o nā kanaka o iwi o Hawaii. E mālama o kou iā mākou. E ulu i ka lani. E ulu i ka honua. E ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike. E ho mai ka i kaika. E ho mai ki aka mai. E ho mai ka maupopopono. E ho mai ka ike pāpālua. E ho mai ka mana. Nā au mākua mai ka lā hiki a ka lā kau. Mai ka hoku i a ka hālā wai. Nā au mākua iā ka hina akua iā ka hina alo. Iā ka a kau i ka lani. O ki hā i ka lani. O we i ka lani. Nū nulu i ka lani. Kā holo i ka lani. E ia kā pula pula. Pula pula a o nga ohana o USBC. E mālama o kou iā mākou. E ulu i ka lani. E ulu i ka honua. E ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike. E ho mai ka i kaika. E ho mai ki aka mai. E ho mai ka maupopopono. E ho mai ka ike pāpālua. E ho mai ka mana. A mama, ua noa, lele vale. Okay, mahalo. So... This is just, again, setting up the sacred space for what we're going to talk about today. Um, this is the translation um, on the right-hand side. So just really bringing strength and um, knowledge to us, understanding of, you know, what it is that I'm going to be sharing about and then um, bringing all of our ancestors here to be with us. So mahalo for letting me share that. Um, just some quick quick information about me, where I come from. Um, on the top left here is my dad and his six brothers before the last brother was born. Uh, my dad is this one right here, um, top right, uh, skinny guy, top right middle. Um, on the right side, this is my uh, mother's family. So my mother comes from four sisters. So I have seven brothers on one side and four sisters on the other side. So very strong in both um, female and male strength. Um, in the middle is my sister and I. My sister is, uh, again, another very important pillar of strength for me. Um, and then um, this is me uh, here also. And I have four children um, of my own as well, 12, um, 9, 8, and 4. And um, all of them had very different um, breastfeeding journeys. And it was like kind of only with my last child that I really, really was able to dig deep and um, breastfeed her the longest. Uh, my father came from like a tradition of um, carnation powdered milk being what they fed babies back then. And that was all he knew. Um, so that was all he knew to tell me. And then my mother was told that um, she couldn't breastfeed, so she didn't really try. And then she told, she was later told me that I would be the same and I wouldn't be able to because she wouldn't be able to. So I had believed that for um, a long time until I had my daughter and I said, nope, I know I can do it. I know um, my body is meant to do this. And so this is me. Um, this is my journey of breastfeeding with my daughter. Um, that's her little hand in there because I'm feeding her and then of course um, me in the wee hours of the morning but I and then uh, you know 
I had been uh, pumping as well. So I was just really trying to be like a breastfeeding machine. And I was really, that was a huge uh, journey for me to get to that where I really was like, I, I can breastfeed and I do make milk. And so um, I remember wishing though, like when I became a breastfeeding fair counselor that I had had that person to, you know, like coach me and be there for me. Um, but I guess that's why maybe what this job called to me because I needed to be that person for um, the next mothers who needed that support. So I'm just very, very grateful um, to be on this journey. Um, something that's happening now. So hopefully, um, hopefully many of you understand that um, there's a lot going on in Hawaii right now. Um, we are in the midst of what we call ALA, which is uh, translates to like an awakening. Um, just a really short history of what's happening. Uh, Mauna Kea is um, right now we're fighting against, well, we're not fighting, but we are get showing our love and aloha for Mauna Kea by telling um, the university and other people who have mismanaged the use of the mountain that we do not want another telescope built, not the world's largest telescope, not any other telescope. We have a total, I believe, of 13 telescopes up at Mauna Kea right now that um, not all of them are in use or in service. Some of them are being decommissioned to be removed. Um, and we just, we don't, we don't want any more um, things built on our sacred lands. And so what has happened on Mauna Kea has transcended and translated to many other areas. Um, the area that I'm in right now, Waimanalo, is right next to um, Hunananiho, which is another sacred area where we believe um, we have found some ibi, which are our kupuna's bones. And they are trying to clear the land of um, several, I, I believe at least 20 acres in order to build parking lots, um, uh, baseball fields and basketball and soccer fields, um, which the community has clearly said that they do not want. We have other um, sports complexes within this same ahupua'a, the same area that are not you being used and are not being fixed themselves. And um, so we are really coming we're rising up as a people saying like, we're tired of our land being mismanaged, misused and bulldozed. Um, so on the bottom left, uh, we've had about 50 people have been, I believe, arrested um, in Hunananiho. And the middle um, photo on the bottom is a photo of uh, protesters at the Kahuku wind turbine. Um, they are attempting to build these large wind turbines um, up on the mountain um, and we are concerned about the closeness of it to our um, to our areas as well as um, those wind turbines killing um, native Hawaiian uh, our native Hawaiian bat population so those are all concerns um, but this Awakening, this ALA has really spread um, on the bottom right hand side. We just did a, um, a unity march and that was over uh, 20,000 people that marched all the way through Waikiki. And that was just our very peaceful uh, way of saying that we're tired and we've had enough. <clears throat> I myself have been to Mauna Kea um, twice. I took my middle son um, there and we did um, we worked in the kitchen and then um, we went to a couple classes there. They offer classes up there. And then I went with my cousin and his kumu, his teacher, and they gave an offering and they did their own oli. And that was a huge honor for me um, to be able to just support them um, in that, um, that desire for them to go. So, and then this is, of course, um, Aquaman here in the middle. He's very, very, um, very active in what's happening on Mauna Kea. And maybe some of you have seen some other um, famous people, The Rock and um, a couple other people. But we're, we're grateful that they want to use their fame to uh, bring awareness. Um, so that's kind of a short history about um, what's happening in Hawaii. But the importance of sharing this with you is that our Native Hawaiian people with this awakening are really coming to have a strong desire to learn, um, to learn more, to seek knowledge and to really seek who they are. Um, we have people, you know, right now that feel like, well, I know I might identify with being Hawaiian, but 
am I Hawaiian enough? Like, do I know enough? I don't know enough about, um, I don't speak the language or I don't know enough about my culture, but it's not, we, it doesn't matter what you, how much, you know, Hawaiian you are, it shouldn't ever matter. And I know um, Native Americans too, like we are, unfor we've unfortunately been trained in this mindset of having to worry about how much our blood quantum is and that, should not matter. What matters is where you are in the journey of understanding and identifying with being Hawaiian and where you want to take it. And the fact that you want to learn more and do more is already saying that, you know, you are supportive of your people and our Lahui, our community. So the Indigenous Breastfeeding Counselor training came at such a pivotal and amazing time because women and people they really wanted to learn um, this knowledge and this information. So, um, I'm gonna minimize this so I can see. Um, this, so this was interesting for me. So I'm gonna share with you how um, the IBC kind of came to fruition a little bit for us and um, how thinking about how it was gonna work um, in Hawaii. So, um, I do a volunteer for um, the Breastfeeding Hawaii Coalition, um, and as I was volunteering, I am one of two um, women who identify as Native Hawaiian. And so um, the president um, had gone to a USBC training uh, uh, conference, excuse me, and had met uh, Cami and Kim. And so she had brought this idea, you know, back with her, and she asked, she asked me, um, you know, if I would take on a special project, you know, and I thought to myself, well, I'm still so new in this coalition, like, you know, why, um, why would she ask me? But I had been making a lot of connections with um, Native Hawaiian community members. Um, I'm also um, a member of a birth and breastfeeding um, Native Hawaiian practitioner group, and we translate um, the Native Hawaiian newspapers um, and information about birth and how we birth, uh, we translate the into English so we can understand um, what those practices were. So I had been building all of these amazing connections and still trying to figure out like, wow, why, wh why am I doing this? And when she asked me to take on this project, I felt like everything kind of came full circle. Like this, the purpose was clear of why I had been building all of these connections. And so, I, I came to understand, you know, maybe that's why she asked me. Um, a very important piece to the Indigenous Breastfeeding Counselor training is that it is only meant to be, it is only for Indigenous people. And um, like I said, I'm two, only one of two um, Native Hawaiians uh, on that volunteer or with the board. Everyone else does not identify as Indigenous or Native Hawaiian. So when she, when the president explained that to me, she said, well, we're gonna host, you're, you're gonna help me coordinate it, we're gonna host it, but we won't be able to go. And I said, what, what, why? And she said, because the stipulation for the Indigenous Breastfeeding Counselor training is that it is only for Indigenous um, people who identify as Indigenous, but it's very, it's so important for our Indigenous people to have this knowledge that I want you to, to be, you know, in the forefront of planning it and working on it. And we will just write the grants in the background and, you know, help you as best as we can. And that's really the first time that I came across what we call allied work, where this coalition, this group of, you know, people, there's, they are, the, em the empathy is, is, is so piha, is so full, is so huge. They want to, you know, help with the rise of Indigenous people, even though they can't be present. And so I want to just say that I want to encourage anybody that's listening that that is huge that some, that a, an organization would go this far out of their way to help another community to rise up, even though they know that they cannot participate in this in this event. And I know Cami and Kim had mentioned that, you know, there were, there are, have been organizations that have said, you know, we want to bring the, we want to have the indigenous training, but we're going to have all these other people here. And she said, no, 
You know, it's only for indigenous people. It is a special training and indigenous people deserve to have that, deserve to have that right to be together and learn together without having, you know, without any, anyone else who's not indigenous. And so another part of it is that, um, again, you, the grant will fully cover um, attendees. Attendees will not pay. Um, we provide the accommodations where they stay, the food, everyday breakfast and lunch, snacks, the lodging, um, the uh, airfare and car. And then of course, it covers the cost for them to be at the conference, um, their manual um, and just their day-to-day -day things, all of that covered under grants that an allied organization is applying for even though those board members cannot attend so this was again like very huge you know in 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 hawaii you know and, and probably a lot of places we native hawaiian people indigenous people you know we're very warm we're very welcoming we we don't we don't ask anyone to to leave or, or shut anyone out. We always wanna make sure that people feel welcome. We always would call you to come eat, come in, come inside, eat. Like you're tired, you're thirsty. That is just an indigenous way and an indigenous mindset. So to come to this space where it's just fully indigenous people where we can just feel comfortable to learn together with just our own people that that was a very that was a very new concept for me and it took me a while to just sit with that um another thing was that you know she had explained that the trainers that were coming you know were native american and they were going to come here to hawaii and you know teach native hawaiians of course we have you know um people who identify as native american here but that was another thing that you know i had to work out how we were going to um, have these trainers that are coming that are Native American and we're Native Hawaiian. How is that all going to look and work? Because I mean, we are very similar um, in a sense, but you know, we have different, very different traditions. And so, what I, what we kind of came up with was that within this Native American training, we would infuse. Um, our own Native Hawaiian speakers and cultural practitioners to share about different cultural practices that would support uh, Indigenous breastfeeding and also support us as learners, um, you know, to learn about um, different cultural practices that we're going to help the practitioners to do the work and then be able to share the knowledge with women who um, you know, indigenous women, indigenous families who wanted to breastfeed. And so, you know, we felt, we thought about it and it, it came, what came up was, you know, we want to share our culture with our native cousins, the native Americans, and then we can learn about their culture as they share with us. And we will, you know, we can see that we're really not so different um, in a lot of ways. Um, and then another um, another thing that was mind blowing, but so simple was that um, children were welcome and children of all ages were welcome. And it was it was a thought of like they're they should be crying, they should be talking, they should be you know there with their mother, they should be breastfeeding um, or being fed. However that needs to look and mothers and learners should feel comfortable knowing maybe that they if they have to go pick up their child around two o'clock you know that's when we'll break people can step away bring their children back and the children can all play together so this type of training where the children and the ohana was welcome was another that was another um real eye opener for me and um as a planner and and the and the other people that were helping me to plan it um, so, of course, in Indigenous cultures and in Native Hawaiian cultures, the food is um, is very key to anything we do. When we um, when we share food, when we anytime we you know we come together for a meal, that is really how we um, how we fellowship with each other, how we learn from each other, um, 
and how we just we just share. And when we share these foods that we've made, that we've created, and the indigenous foods, you know, we're just showing our love, our aloha for each other, and how important you are to me. That I want to share this with you. I made this for you, and I want you to be well. I want you to aola, live well. So it was very important to me um, to make sure that our uh, foods that we were eating on a daily basis were our staple indigenous foods. Um, so uh, we had um, local vendors that were not farther than about 20 miles from where we were going to host the training. Um, a lot of those indigenous, um, a lot of them were indigenous, if not most of them. Um, and we have on the top here, this is this is a taro top right hand side. That's um, poi, which is our traditional, very traditional food. We have the, we use the leaves from the kalo, and that is this kind of bottom right side. This, um, it's called a uh, luau stew. So we turn the leaves into like a stew with like chicken and um, uh, he'e, which is uh, octopus. And then um, on the bottom left hand side, this is whole eel, um, which is the baby fern shoots. And we usually eat that um, with the limu, which is seaweed that um, that they traditionally uh, picked at low tide. And of course, bananas my, uh, are always our traditional foods, but it was just very important um, to have these cultural foods throughout the entire um, training. And um, we had, uh, Cami said we had a record number of dietitians that attended the training. So even more so I thought, wow, it's gonna be really important that I make sure that um, everybody eats well. And, you know, the significance for that too was that I knew if I fed people foods, uh, uh, I pono, which means uh, I is to eat or food and pono is right or good. Um, so if I was feeding everybody um, I pono, then I knew that I would be feeding, you know, not only their bodies, but their minds as well. And they would be better equipped to learn and grow um, and to take in um, all of this knowledge. So this is starting from day one. It was a five day training. Um, and uh, if you look on the top right hand side, this is the um, Oh, this is the big pimp and pad that uh, we uh, rented, uh, Breastfeeding Hawaii rented for our, um, we had many guests from our neighbor islands. Um, so of course, if, if you do or don't know, you know, we have eight Hawaiian, main Hawaiian islands and we really wanted to make sure we got representation as much as we could from all of the islands. Um, we had our uh, Maui, uh, Hawaii Island, that's the big island, Kauai. Um, and of course, Oahu is uh, where I, the island that I live on. And then we had uh, one or we had two from Lanai and Molokai. Uh, we wanted to have one from Niihau. Niihau is where um, the Manaleo, the native speakers live. We couldn't get her to come. And then our Kauai girl um, couldn't come at the last minute, but we had this beautiful, I believe this is like a 11 bedroom um, house that is not far from where I am now in Waimanalo. And that is, it's, it's a beach house. And this is where we, our guests, our neighbor island guests stayed um, for the entire week. Um, and we opened again with the Oli that I shared with you this morning. And we gave lay to um, Kami and Kim who were, they were just um, so honored and of course, you know, as we were so honored that they um, came with us. Um, and so day one really started with um, uh, introductions, introductions of who we were and what ended up kind of unfolding with introductions is people really needed to talk about their own breastfeeding stories and, and what that looked like for them and how that transcends into like the work that they're doing now, whether it was, yes, breastfeeding or a childbirth story. Um, but they there was a lot of sharing that needed to happen um, in order for us to uh, start learning from each other and getting to know one another and, and coming to understand that many of our stories were similar and, you know, a lot of things that happened to one happened to the other. And what did you do? And this is how I did it. And oh, that was a good idea. I can try that with a client. Like those, all those things um, started to unfold. Um, and then the first day on the bottom, uh, in the middle there, um, the wahini, the lady wearing the haku, that's Dr. Alkahi Austin Seabury. So she was our first speaker. Um, 
on uh, day one. And she is very, very knowledgeable about um, cultural trauma, particularly cultural trauma to um, our native Hawaiian and uh, Polynesian uh, people. And so she really shared about how um, basically how our whole lifestyle, you know, changed and, you know, were, were taken away from us, um, you know, when we became colonized and ultimately when our um, queen was overthrown. And that cultural trauma that happened to our ancestors has, has transcended over and, and, and stuck with us through the generations of, you know, as the generations have, have come. And so coming to understand that what happened then still affects us today and how that ultimately has really, um, has really hurt our people as far as um, illegal drug use, chronic disease, you know, physical and mental illness, um, all of those things, you know, we are unfortunately a product of all of those different traumas that have happened. And that was something that I don't think many of the attendees ever, ever heard of. And so it was a very big moment of awe, oh, of understanding maybe why they felt this or that. And so that, that really just, that really just, it needed to happen. And we did, we ended up kind of spending the entire day just unpacking everybody's story, whether it was in groups during lunch or whether it was you know, in each person's introduction, um, but we spent a lot of time um, unpacking all of those stories and through that, beginning our journey of getting to know each other. Um, so day two, day two was amazing and very significant. Um, so when we were talking about um, learning about cultural trauma, I thought it would be really important and really good for after we unpack those stories, you know, that can be kind of a heavy, heavy thing to do. Um, and so what we did on day two, first thing in the morning, we had another cultural practitioner come. We met up um, at the beach that's right in front of the beach house in Waimanalo. Um, this is also known as one of the best and most beautiful beaches in the world. And we did what's called a hi'uwai and a hi'uwai is when you, um, the cultural practitioner made a special um, like drink and it was made from um, very special um, salt water, uh, limu, uh, limu color. It's a particular limu that is actually like a, to help you let go of things as well as olena, which is also called turmeric. So she mixed those together. And um, what we did was we did a, oh, we did a oli first in a circle um, together. And of course, as you see the children, they were welcome to. And then everybody drank from the drink that she had made. And then before what you do is you're thinking about, you know, the cultural trauma that maybe you've been facing or an issue or more, issue two, three, four, five, however many you feel like you have. And, you know, you take a moment to just think on those things, pray about that, and then, when we go, what we do is we all go into the ocean and when we're in the ocean, we're letting go of those, those issues and letting that go from us into the ocean. Um, and then as you come out of the ocean and the sun is rising, the sun is rising on a new day and that sun and that uh, warmth is cleansing you of those issues as well. And so this was really, um, this is really a beautiful experience. I mean, not everybody could come, but we had uh, at least 20 uh, of the 36 um, participants that came and it was just, it was huge. And on the bottom in the middle, there is our two uh, Kumu, our teachers, Kami and Kim, and they are doing a traditional honi, which is when you um, touch your foreheads together as well as your, um, your noses and you take a deep breath and what you're doing is uh, take a deep breath and you do an exhale. And what you're doing is you are breathing in um, the breath or the ha of the other person. And as you exhale, they are breathing in your breath. And so you are breathing in their spirit and they are breathing in yours. And it is just a very connective, um, connective way of um, 
being together and showing like love and appreciation. So that was um, just amazing that they could share this moment with us. So that was about an hour in the morning. Um, and then the next part of day two, uh, we spent talking about like um, the history um, of lactation. And then uh, we had, uh, this is my kumu that I said I brought with me this morning when I did the Oli Kumu Emalani. She is uh, one of uh, 10 practitioners um, in the state of La'au Lapa'au, which is our um, traditional cultural plant medicines. Um, so she teaches about um, making different salves and um, the importance of prayer, of gratitude and of you know acknowledging the plants themselves and what they are giving of us to us, sacrificing for us, and that everything you do uh, with the plants or with anything needs to have good intention. Even when you make something for someone else, you're praying when you make that, you're putting all of your best intentions in that to heal that person with whatever it is that you're making for them. Um, so what we made for this time was um, like a kind of a cleansing face mask. And that was more talking about like the importance of self-care, whether it's for the uh, counselor or whether it's for the mother, but the importance of um, uh, spiritual health, physical health, um, just just being really mindful of, you know, um, of your health and um, that, your health is so vital and important, you know what I mean? Because you need to be able to take care of yourself so that you can take care and feed your baby. And um, so that was just really uh, mind opening for all of us. And we have all of, um, she brought some of the traditional, um, this is the kui, papa kui, which is the uh, stone bowl with the, um, it's like a pounder. And that's how we kind of, we mash um, the different la'au, the plants. And then we, um, we kind of we juice them and we call the juice within the plant the blood of the plant because that blood runs through the veins of the plant and the plant is giving us um that juice or that la'au to heal um, ourselves and others and um this woman on the top right hand side this is my mentor this was my um first uh supervisor she was my supervisor as when I was a breastfeeding prayer counselor and she you know she taught me so much and so I felt so honored that now here she was coming to learn you know from something that I had put together so that was very much um, a full circle moment uh, for me so that was day two uh, day three was very full very robust uh, Kami and Kim uh, shared their this amazing uh, beading project that we all were, you know, able to work on together. It was um, hand sewing little like boobs, and it was so therapeutic in a sense that everybody could make their and um, design their boob according to how they maybe how their breastfeeding journey went or what they could relate to. You know, it was funny. Some people were putting like, oh, you know, I had a bleb. So they would put the bead as a, a bleb or, you know, but it was like they, we could do this project all together. And that was just, that was so healing um, in and of itself. Uh, we did go into a great deal about um, the importance of position and latch and how that is so key to uh, making sure that, you know, milk is being removed so that, uh, you can get that supply and demand effect going. We went into great detail about that. Um, and then we had two very important practitioners um, share. Uh, this one on the far right, this is Kumulena Alabright. She is also a La'o Lapa'o practitioner, but she has also been doing Lomi Lomi, which is Native Hawaiian uh, massage uh, for over 20 years. And she is our, the Waimanala Health Center's um, cultural director. She um, she has so much knowledge. So she and Emma Lani are actually um, one of two of the ten practitioners of La'au Lapa'au um, in the state. And so she shared about um, a type of very quick healing for massage. She shared about um, uh, the importance of the types two types of massage, which was one to do with um, helping the lymph to move. Uh, pertaining to like, um, you know, breastfeeding issues. And then another one, which was kind of like more of like, if you have a, um, 
if you have mastitis or if you have um, like a plug duck, that type of massage and how um, the, the lymph massage is a very, very light touch because the lymph is very close to the surface of the skin. And then about how the type of um, massage that needs to be done for like mastitis and um, to help with uh, moving, uh, moving milk and getting that going. So her, and she had never shared, really shared her this information with any other group. So we were just so honored that she, um, she was willing to share that with us. And then um, on the bottom, we were outside and we did what's called Ho'oponopono. I don't know how many of you um, know what, oops, sorry. How do I go back there? Go back, there we go, go back, sorry. Um, have done Ho'oponopono. Let me make sure that I'm still here. Is everybody still here? Kinkini, are you there? Yes, we're here. Yes, okay, just making sure. Okay, um, sorry. Okay, so the bottom middle uh, was Ho'oponopono, and what Ho'oponopono is is um, it's it's a native it's it's like a native Hawaiian conflict resolution, and that is so critical to um, your village. You know, your village of people that are going to help and support you um, throughout pregnancy and on your breastfeeding journey. Um, that that support, we call that kako'o, that is, is so important. And a lot of times that is what a lot of mothers that I see say they didn't have. They didn't have support or there was there was an issue or there was a problem or that people, that their ohana couldn't get past. And so their, their breastfeeding uh, journey was not as important uh, to them as it should have been. And so what we did in Ho'oponopono, um, uh, we talked about um, the importance of acknowledging where the problem is and then, you know, sitting down to really massage it, lomi it, and talk about it and find out where does the problem lie, within who does the problem lie, and is it, is it something that, how can we address it and how can we solve it and move forward? And she talked a lot about how we as mothers you know, we have all of this guilt. Am I enough? Am I doing enough? And that I put my child in the right school. Um, am I, did I buy the right crib, the right car seat? Um, oh, this friend has this and I don't have that. And should I have that? And should I do this? All these questions and guilt that we have as mothers for feeling like we're not doing enough, we're not good enough. And simply put, she said, take that, take that guilt that you have, take that fear that you have by the hand, put it up and blow it away and let it go because it's not worth, it's not worth the energy that you need to put into feeding your baby and loving your baby, loving yourself and caring for your family. And uh, this is Kumu Kuume Aloha Gomes. She's a well-known community member um, and a longtime practitioner of um, Ho'oponopono, again, one of a very select group of um, Ho'oponopono practitioners. And um, she was, I'm, we were so blessed to be able to listen to her um, talk about this. And so, the, again, it's, it's the importance of not just for the mothers that we're teaching, but as practitioners, making sure that we feel, we feel strong and that any issues that we have we can let go of, so we can then give our full attention to these mothers and these families, and you know, give give what what they need. Be empathetic, understanding, helping them to understand. Maybe we went through this, and this is how you know, this is how I can help you to solve um, this issue that you're having, or even just helping them figure out where that issue lies. So day three was very full and very very powerful. Um, we were just, there was, we, we joked that there was just so much, you know, oxytocin in the room. We all felt like we were going to start relactating or something because it was just, there was so much amazing, good energy um, in the room and in this group. Oops, sorry, sorry. No, don't do that. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry. 
go back. Go back, no. Sorry. No worries. Where'd I go? Oh, no, wait. Click to exit. There we go, sorry, okay. Okay, there we are. So this is um, day four. Um, so day four uh, was, of course, another very full day. Um, we had our practitioner, um, Antika Iu. Antika Iu is who leads our um, our birth hui, our cultural birth and breastfeeding hui. And um, she is also a registered dietitian. Um, what has become, what, what she is so well known for is um, making indigenous, indigenous foods and Aipono a priority. She absolutely prioritizes those as what should be our first foods, our only foods, um, Kalo, Ulu, um, uh, Ulu is like our, um, it's, it's another like starch that we eat similar to poi uh, or taro, um, but just prioritizing the importance um, of those foods um, as what should be our indigenous uh, foods that we eat on a daily basis. Um, another key thing that really, um, that really resonated with all of us was this mama in the middle. Um, she was a participant um, and she was also having um, some breastfeeding issues. Um, she found uh, that, you know, baby was having a difficulty with latch. Um, and she was having some issues with family members um, at home that seemed to be kind of um, interrupting and hurting her breastfeeding journey. A lot of um, family um, that wanted to come in and, you know, hold baby, take baby, um, you know, be with baby, not realizing like being with, being with his mother is such a critical thing that right now that's what needs to happen. So um, she had some issues um, with that. And then she also... Um, felt like maybe baby had a, you know, some physical issues, and so what ended up happening is that we, we asked her, Cami and Kim, uh, talked to her about it. Like if we could help her and do the do a breastfeeding assessment with her baby, that's Mamua is the baby's name, and you know how we can all, we can they were gonna do this assessment, and if we can help to heal, you know, feel like help her to feel like. We can heal her and we can also maybe feel like you know we're 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 grateful and we are healing ourselves by offering this healing to her so we you know we all sat around her um kind of towards the end of the day and uh cami kind of just talked through um the the breastfeeding assessment and just you know it was just a very comfortable just such a comfortable setting. I don't have pictures because we just felt like, you know, that wasn't a time um, to take pictures or anything like that. But, you know, Cami checked, Cami did a the assessment. He did have, um, he did have a slight uh, lip and tongue tie that, you know, we, we, we saw is, was part of the issue of, you know, why he was having a difficulty with latch. And of course, with the difficulty with latch, mom's supply had been, had gone down quite a bit. Um, but it was just through talking with her and being with her um, that she, she, I mean, if you look at the picture, like she's just, she was glowing. She felt, she felt so loved and um, that she was a priority, which she had not been um, for a long time, you know, back in the, both the relationship with um, family that she had been in for a long time. So she came in and she just felt really, loved and taken care of and you know like that we were you know her village her sisters that were there for her to help her and whatever she needed um so that was really a critical piece of um day four uh, we also got into um like learning circles to kind of just talk about um again you know like maybe different scenarios that we've come across in um, our work with breastfeeding and <clears throat> how did we address those things maybe sh and sharing about what would other what would our uh, what would others you know have done <clears throat> in those situations um, and then here on the bottom left we had a we ended up having the just this um, a very organically happening we did like a, a lay uh, making uh, workshop at the house in the evening so that was just another 
wonderful time to like fellowship together, talk story. Um, Amber, I think we lost your audio. So it was just um, such an amazing time. Okay. Okay. Oops, no, no. Okay. Okay, and here is um, day five, which is our last day together. We were all starting to get so sad. Um, so on day five, um we learned about some olelo hawaii for um breastfeeding which is our you know olelo hawaii is our hawaiian language and uh cami this uh, woman in the red shirt is another cami our second cami she um has four children all who were born at home and who um were born uh, uh with a midwife and with her husband as like kind of the second in command um and all very you know very healthy uh babies um and so she shared with us about um the uh different words to do with um birth or breastfeeding um in my oli i mentioned hanai wayu and hanai uh, vayu is um how we say breastfeed hanai is to feed vayu is breast milk so hanai wayu is uh, breast milk feeding in a sense. Um, and so we ended up kind of calling ourselves this hui, which is a group, uh, hui ha nai vayu. Um, that's who we kind of affectionately, what we affectionately call, call this group. Um, and so on our fifth day, you know, we, um, we just, we, we learned, it, it became kind of a, a, a day of having to make sure that, you know, we covered a lot of things that Maybe we didn't um, necessarily get to, but um, you know, here we are showing off this this one on the top left. Kainoa, she made like four breastfeeding pins. Like everybody was so into that and loved it. It was so therapeutic to do that, and we were just doing it as we were learning. Um, and then uh, we had another sponsor here on the top right. That was um, Calmet Hawaii. That is our um, one of the organizations or businesses that um, supplies breast pumps. They had sent. Um, three of their uh, people who are uh, indigenous um, to our training just to kind of get a better understanding of who they're serving um, and who the clientele is. And um, they donated this amazing breast pump to us, this Calypso, which I had never heard of before, but they said this is like the quietest breast pump ever. So they ended up donating that um, to Breastfeeding Hawaii and you know, everybody felt so um, so moved by um, our mama that we did the assessment with. Um, that they, uh, Kalmed, gave her her own like gift card, and you know, we really just prayed over her. We did another oli with her, and in the end, we also did like a circle where everybody said something positive about her or to help her on her journey as she moves on. And and she was, you know, she was just so moved. And she felt so good. Um, and on the bottom, in the middle, there is a very, very um, special gift that Cami and Kim uh, gave to me. Uh, it's a dali, and it was she. Uh, Cami had it made uh, for me, and it's depicting, of course, a, in, a Native Hawaiian uh, breastfeeding uh, mother. And then on the left, um, that symbolizes kind of the kukia imauna, what's happening on the mauna, and with our Indigenous people rising, and then um, the water on the bottom, um, where it where it moves all the way up to, is a symbol of um, the connection of water with um, our breastfeeding, uh, our indigenous breastfeeding. Um, so we really just, you know, we just really bonded, and we did a little bit more um, of assessment with. Um, our mama too, you know, with um, the, the breastfeeding assessment, we kind of finished that up and um, just ended the, ended didn't want to, of course, end the training, but ended on such, you know, an amazing, an amazing feeling. Um, there were 36, um, 36 uh, 
women who received the IBC designation. We were also proud, you know, of our certificates. And uh, Cami gave everybody a, um, a photo, uh, um, a print that was um, designed by um, an indigenous artist. And it's uh, on the bottom right there um, of a, you know, indigenous woman breastfeeding her baby. And just, you know, I mean, it's it was it was such a powerful time. I I had I had no way to anticipate how powerful this training, you know, was going to be and how needed it was um, for our community. Because in the end, before the training started, we ended up having um, sixty applicants total, but our funds could only um, could only take care of. We had thirty seven that we were able to um accept uh and so we you know we have with that in mind we do have in mind to then create um a very native hawaiian specific um lactation course in the future knowing that we do have such huge um interest in um continuing and so uh, no task is too great um, when done together and so just some final thoughts on the IBC in Hawaii. Um, so again, like I said, 36 indigenous women uh, received the IBC designation. Um, you know, I we talked about putting that IBC right on you, you know, add that to your credentials right away. Tell people who you are, tell people what you know, share it. You know, it's it's such a powerful designation, an indigenous breastfeeding counselor, so powerful. Um, and we all felt really deeply connected, knowing that everyone there was an indigenous woman. We were all of this common same thread or this same feather, as we also call that in Hawaiian culture. We're all of this same feather. We're all indigenous women. Um, what also helped us, you know, in building this relationship was that we were we were vulnerable in front of each other. We shared these very intimate stories with each other that maybe we had not shared with anybody in a long time or ever. And we felt so comfortable sharing these stories, uh, being vulnerable with each other in this time. Um, and we took the time to listen to each other in our like, you know, in our fast paced um, time that we're in now with technology and all that. We don't always have time to listen to each other. But as every person stood up to introduce themselves, everybody really listened to who they were, where they came from. What was their story? Um, we started off each day setting our intentions to, to have a good day and to learn and listen. And we did that every day through Oli and Pule. Pule is prayer. And we did two Olis um, every day, every morning, facing um, the direction that the sun rises every day. And that really helped us to be grounded um, in the work that and the day that we were about to um, embark on. And so we really grew, we really grew together as a family, um, as a hui or a group uh, within that five days. Uh, a lot of us knew each other, you know, um, from before or didn't. Um, and we all, we all just, we just grew together into this, into this family. And we definitely built, you know, a powerhouse team of women to now go out and help our communities to rise, help our mothers to rise, help our families to rise help our indigenous people to feel empowered to step up and rise up and take care of their ohana and, and breastfeed their children. Um, and, and everybody came away with the thought of really wanting to share this experience with others. Of course, we wanna make sure that those other applicants that weren't able to join us, you know, we, we really still wanna share this experience with them. And, you know, we're working on that goal of um, another training. Um, and we, we, again, came together, built these relationships also around this one, this one woman and her baby. And, you know, we all came together to be there for her, to help her, to particularly lift her up in the time where she really needed it and didn't, didn't realize that, you know, we were, we were all right there and that, um, she really is so important. And so I just want to leave you with this last thought of um, in the beginning of the 
the the the part of the theme for what I wanted to talk about was Oke Kahua Mamua Mahope Ke Kukulu, which uh, Kinkini shared. First, the foundation, and then the structure can be built. So first is to you know lay the foundation for the this IBC training, teach these women so they can then start to build the structure. And so once we finished this training, now we felt pa'ake kahua e ho'omaka ikahana. Now firm is this foundation that we've built. Let this work begin for us to now empower and help our indigenous um, breastfeeding community to rise up, to teach them, to um, embrace them, to, to love them, to take care of them, and to just, again, empower them to, um, to breastfeed and know that they have a support system. So, mahalo everyone for um, listening and joining, and um, I hope my presentation was um, helpful and enjoyable. Um, thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo, Amber, um, for inviting us into this sacred space to learn together. What a profound session. And we have so many questions and just so many takeaways from this of you know how deeply what happens to our land um, crosses every aspect of our life, how breastfeeding exists in context and how our faiths are so inextricably linked. So um, I am so honored before we um, get to the questions to say that for those of you who've been hearing about the IBC training, um, that um, this training was created by Cami Goldhammer, funded and funded by the Cheer or Champs um, uh, Kellogg Foundation um, funded Cheer and Champs program of, um, conducted by the Boston Medical Center. Um, the Cami Goldhammer and Kim Salasmore have been traversing the country offering this incredible training um, to com tribes and communities across the country and they did a fantastic webinar about this earlier um, in the year and we are so honored that we have Kim Salasmore, uh, one of the trainers that you saw in the picture. Um, Kim is um, an, an awardee um, for her work um, with the Navajo Nation and Dene tribe in Arizona. She is a USBC board member and we are so honored. And we'd, I'd love to invite Kim to share some of your um, vantage from the trainer's point of view as you went to Hawaii and um, uh, worked and partners with the community in um, offering this training. Hi, good, good, after, or good, good afternoon. I'm assuming it's afternoon wherever everybody's at right now. Um, thank you for inviting me, Kinkini and Amber. Um, I just want to say that I did communicate with Cami this morning that um, she just want to share that how grateful we are to have been invited and trusted by the community and just that the sisterhood that was built there during the week. Um, and the wonderful un uniqueness of the guest teachers that we had throughout the week. Um, was very powerful. Um, <clears throat> um, coming into the space for Hawaii, um, you know, we didn't know what to expect. Um, I can say that the invitation there with the community was, was in all communities that we get invited to, everyone is very unique in, in how they um, bring us into their space. Um, and just being trusted is so important to us that um, the invitation is is what we really want committees to do is to invite us and that we don't invite ourselves and that's one of our main um, main things that we do when we're looking at communities to come is that um, that they look at um, you know the the big picture of, of why we do what we do um, <clears throat> the intentions behind it um, and just that how important it is that this work is um, given back to the community. Um, and I think that Amber really worked very hard at collaborating with really good partnerships um, and how open they were to understand um, why we only offered it to Indigenous um, people. Um, 
and that was really, really important to us to, to get that um, point across. Um, but, you know, the, the sunrise ceremony that we had the first day on day one was so powerful. It set the stage to um, what was to become that week. Um, very sacred space, um, very, very welcoming. I think this was never done in that kind of environment or space from what Amber had told me. So to have the teachers come um, and to see the women gather and really be eager to learn and be around each other and share. I just saw that, um, just seeing the community being being so lifted and healed and powerful at the end of the week was, was so moving and healing for me and Cami. So we were so happy to be there and, and to see um, everyone learn and, share and cry and sing and chant. Um, the protocol that was set every day was so important. Um, I feel like this is what IBC was meant to be and, and how it was laid out. I think Cami's vision has definitely come to, um, to full circle. Um, and, and I think we cried the first day. It was like being at our first IBC training in Alaska you know, every every time we go to a community, you know, the women sit there just so eager to learn and understand. And that first day is so powerful about cultural trauma that um, I think I was crying at this one this one training um, to see the community members and their faces about what U.S. has been through with their indigenous people and what they have done and how they can relate to that. Um, and to share and, and then they cry and then we cry. It was really, really moving. I was so moved by that um, first day of the sunrise ceremony, the water, um, and then <clears throat> the foods were amazing. Um, I was looking at your pictures, Amber, of your slide. I was like, oh, that tasted good. Oh, I, I got so hungry just looking at your pictures right now that I remember each each food that you offered and how how much that food did for our bodies and just thinking about how, where it came from and how how intentional and love that came in making that food. Um, it was really, really powerful. So thank you, Amber, for, for doing that and bringing people together. And um, But yeah, Cam and I are so grateful to be there and it was so, so, it was a blessing. I, I'm, I talk about it and I, I can just see everything again and see, the, the women's faces and looking at the pictures again just brought me back. So, um, yeah, it was it was a great, great training. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Kim. And again, so many profound lessons today. Um, Amber, thank you for this incredible work that you're doing in the state of Hawaii with um, um, in, in your communities. Um, one very um, important theme that Amber brought up is allyship and the fact that um, two things struck out. One is that, you know, when you said that we have a door, you know, you're so welcoming of folks and that this, this um, really having to work up to be, to accept that this was going to be um, a space that's only for indigenous um, and we at the USBC see that every single year that there is just such a cultural um, uh, full emphasis on building relationships. Uh, whenever we have uh, our attendees from the uh, Alaska Native, Indigenous, uh, you come bearing gifts for uh, us and we are so profoundly moved every single time. So uh, as a person who reviews a lot of proposals, I invite state coalitions, local coalitions, anyone who's writing a grant or planning to do a project with um, and na native communities are your priority populations. Do think about the kind of training that you're providing. Make sure that you know these incredible um, strengths and assets and cultural traditions, the, uh, the purpose of any project has to be uh, beyond uh, that one uh, project, but into building community resiliency and supporting the resiliency in the communities we do. So I think, Amber, you've really given us that challenge to make sure that uh, we do better. Um, so here's a question. Um, 
and, and, and Burke, Kim, if any of you um, would do that. So definitely bringing the indigenous breastfeeding counselor trainings uh, to communities where we are working is vitally important. Um, how else can uh, non-natives be allies in breastfeeding support in indigenous communities where um, could you share with us some other ways? Is that me? Sure, Amber, go for it. Oh, sorry, so sorry. It's open to both of you, so any, oh, anyone. Go please. ahead, Kim. Go ahead, Kim. You can you can answer that one. Are you there? Go ahead. Um, I'll I'll start off the the answer. Well, not the answer, but my thoughts on it. But I definitely want to hear your 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 process, Amber, because I think um, when you initiated this 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 um, this project, I think you created a dialogue between other people in your community about this. And I think your networking helped um, get this going. But I think what was really, what really had to happen is the allies that wanted to help and what their motives were. Was it for their own, um, you know, self-serving, way about where it puts them as um you know white culture or is it going to be i want to help and i will put i will help you but i want to put this i want you to tell me how to steer it how can we help and put and collaborate um better and understanding i think understanding why they want to help is really important and that that helps with decolonizing the process and that's where what we look at is What's your intention? Um, let's talk. Let's share. Let's understand. Um, do you understand what I'm what I'm saying about um, you know indigenous identity? Why is that important? Um, what does a community look like for you? How are you going to heal that? I think that understanding first that com that communication with other allies is important, and it really sets the the foundation on how we can work together. And I think when we talked to Amber at USBC this past year, you shared that with Cami. I know you guys talked in a great detail. And I know a couple of people came up that you were talking to that, you know, emphasize, you know, the, the, the collaboration and what that process looked like was very, um, to me, um, hopeful for the future future people to come and step up and, and talk to us and, and see how they can be a part of that, you know, the allyship, but not, you know, not take over, not, you know, tell us how it's going to happen. Um, and let us, let us steer that, let the community steer what needs to be done. Um, because that's where the answers are, is that we always say that's always in a community. What is it that they want and hear what they want? I definitely think that's good, not all good thoughts. Um, I think something important, especially for what we're going through in Hawaii right now, is to help um, is to help non-Indigenous people understand that we as Indigenous people, we're not trying to um, pick a fight with anybody. We're not trying to push our um, cultural practices or beliefs on, on anybody. You know, we're not. We're not trying to protest really anything. Um, what we want to do is we want to we want to share our knowledge. We want to learn who we are because those things were taken away from us, and um, we we shouldn't have to make any disclaimers about who we are. Um, you know, sometimes. Um, in, in some of the schools now, uh, they're singing this very important song about our people, Native people rising up and it's in Hawaiian. And some of the schools feel like they have to make these disclaimers before um, the children can sing the song or before the children can learn this information. But why? Why, why do we have to make a disclaimer for, for who we are? You know what I mean? We have we have embraced and all of these generations learned about the American culture and other cultures. Why, when, why now do we have to um, make, in, make any excuses or, or, or feel ashamed to share 
who we are and where we came from and the fact that we we um we are at this we are all at the same level so i think just that education for um non-indigenous people um is important like i said like indigenous people are the warmest people ever i mean we all are but we just like we want to give you know we want to give our our knowledge we want to give gifts this is just just how we get to know each other and um like if if i have a lay on and you come up to me anybody and says that's a beautiful lay my brain says i'm going to give that to you because it's not meant for me now it's meant for you and that's just something that we do um so yeah if i can if i can just say that piece is to just educate and and help non-indigenous people to um to feel comfortable with us sharing um our information and our cultural practices with each other helping them to get to know us and who we are a little bit better so we can then start to build these relationships and build um these allyships to do this um allied work wonderful thank you amber and um kim and again i will reiterate exactly that that uh for um as as in in our vantage when we are working with so many different states and um, communities um, who are working on uh, coalitions working on projects and um, sometimes thinking that our doors are open um, but this work goes at the speed of trust and the language of trust varies from from um, so sometimes we speak different languages of trust and for communities that look at others uh, look at folks as transactional like you um, is th this building that foundation just such a great way for all of us in the work that we th that we do so um, Amber what are some uh, you said that you were who also one of the goals from this training that you had in October was to build a coalition so could you share a little bit more about how um, those plans are and what kind of support um, from the community a tribe you're going to be getting in building a coalition um, I, you know, we definitely talked about it um, during the IBC um, and, you know, a lot, m most of the women are all very much like, of course, yes, that is such an amazing idea. We need our own like indigenous um, coalition and group that we can all, you know, come together and learn together. And I think right now what it will look like is um, kind of everybody putting their knowledge. I think we're probably gonna start with the creation of the, the Native Hawaiian lactation um, course. And again, like going out now even further, reaching out to different like um, Native Hawaiian educators, um, you know, beyond just the breastfeeding realm, but talking to other Native Hawaiian educators about um, what we have in Hawaii is called Aina-based learning right now. And so the children are, that go to these Aina-based learning schools, they learn through doing and doing projects and just like, you know, working with, um, it's like a Native Hawaiian STEM in a sense. Um, they do their math through like, you know, pulling the kalo or they do, they're learning their um, Hawaiian language. Um, they have to, there's a school right down the street, like they go out and they learn in different like parks and areas and they literally like build their structure. They build their tent and all of that kind of stuff before class starts. They all know how to put up and take down a tent within five minutes. They all know that they go and they sit in their circle and, and then they start to learn based on the environment that they're in. And so now maybe going out and talking to those educators about how does how might that type of education transcend into a lactation course, you know, um, where we're doing a lot of like more of like hands on work and project based work um, to uh, to to teach um, the these the to teach a counseling mindset and then just again like the cultural trauma piece is really it's so important it's it's really like it's the key to the opening of people being able to open themselves up 
and and share and again like be intimate with each other um so i think just again like we have hawaii is so big but it's also so small a lot of us know each other so just reaching out further to the um the different practitioners and educators um to get their mana all their thoughts on um putting this coalition together i know that um the women that attended the training you know they 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 are anxious to yeah they are anxious to kind of like move forward and see where we're going with it but all very interested in being part again of this hui of um you know breastfeeding counselors um a 40501c3 but those things are still like i am still in the learning process of of doing all of that so i mean still continuing to have breastfeeding hawaii as our kahua you know as our foundation of where we came from and where we're going is um is going to still be vital in um doing an indigenous um coalition so yes like you said build, building and creating this um coalition based on like trust and relationships and and building those relationships so that we can all kind of come together thank you and really um as you said the timing with the awakening and to and to be and to really is that uh we in the mainland or other uh, in in positions of uh, where we are in, from our vantages is not expecting people to have to explain why they can just be <laughs> and to be able to create those spaces so one of the questions we have here is how can non-indigenous um, uh, uh, people hold space respectfully and not cause additional uh, you know cult trauma um, when um, we are working with uh, mothers and families and um, and children um, I think you know it's appropriate to just um, you know asking questions um uh, that's 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 an interesting question um i think it's just a matter of being being mindful and again being educated in who you know who you're talking to and um what you're talking about you know in hawaii we have a very large um, micronesian population who you know those are you know those are our cousins as well but they are they act and do things in a very different way and um i think understanding that you know different cultures have different have different leaders you know um native americans have their elders native hawaiians have their kupuna and uh you know micronesian people they have their own um a lot of them um there's like you know there's one kind of like village auntie that leads them um i think it's really important to be educated in the culture that you're serving um and and to to go out and seek seek that education for not only you but you know your entire staff um when we were at usbc um somebody shared about the hmong population and and how that's such a huge population and that it was it was so important um to understand the reasons why they were or they weren't breastfeeding not just to again a lot of times people might assume that indigenous people oh you've you've been you've been breastfeeding you know since the beginning of time i don't need to talk to you about this so again not making assumptions about um this culture or this culture and that oh she knows how or she won't breastfeed that's a very that's a very um it's not yeah that's a very bad thing to do to assume that we won't breastfeed or that another culture won't breastfeed um so just again like seeking the education and um offering uh offering the education of you know breastfeeding talking them through that and then again with cultural trauma and um you know people that are going through their own like issues just thanking them for for being there for coming you know starting that 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 session or that um that visit with them with i'm so glad you came today 
uh, your or I'm, I'm glad to see you um, building that relationship with them of maybe like, how, you know, how are you, how are things going at home, if you feel comfortable asking those kind of questions, but just taking yourself out of, I'm the doctor, or I'm the counselor, or I'm the, you know, whatever role that it is that you're in, you know, just, we call that talk story in Hawaii, we just making people feel comfortable that they can just share by first of all, thanking them, you know, for being there and having all, but all good intentions in what you want to share and what you, um, you know, what information you hope to share with them, not in the mindset of like, well, I have to change this person's mind and I have to make them see how important it is to breastfeed. There are so many barriers um, to, you know, maybe a mother or a family breastfeeding, you know, and sometimes, unfortunately, they actually needed to unpack a story first with you and to trust you before they can even think about, again, making a change to, to breastfeed or to do whatever it is that you're trying to educate them on. So um, really just, yeah, listening, not assuming and letting them talk if they need to talk uh, and letting them share uh, whatever story it is that they need to share. That's important. Wonderful, so many um, great um, pieces of advice, Amber. Thank you so much. And I think that, you know, the example of um, breastfeeding Hawaii, where so much of even the uh, organizations that are working in communities, indigenous communities, sometimes um, having the role as the protagonist or the helper or the savior, how might we be able to stand to the um, side and not try to shine the spotlight on the host or the funder, but on the communities that are doing this work. So again, um, amazing work and we will be following uh, all of the work that's happening in your community, Amber, in Hawaii um, this month is, as you, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, it was Native um, American, Native Hawaiian um, month. So we have a page. And so this is, this highlights the organizations, individuals that are working in tribes, communities, um, indigenous communities. So please, we, this page and these resources are as good as what you help us build. So if you know of things, you check out the page, the link is in the um, chat box and please uh, add more, um, uh, please share more with us so that we will be able to bring this to the national audience. Um, thank you again so much. Amber, and thank you, Kim, for being here. If there are any closing uh, um, um, thoughts you want to end with, um, I'd be happy to, um, you know, give some offer some space for that. So thank you again so much. Um, I think I'm good. I think, like I said, just um, listening, you know, listening to your. Um, your audience, your group, and really working towards making a connection rather than trying to teach a lesson. Because once you can make that connection, then you can start to, then you can start to, you know, talk about what change might look like, but not trying to always, you know, teach a lesson or make somebody feel like you have something, you know, I have something to teach you and I have to show you this and then you have to change. It won't happen if that person doesn't trust you and if you haven't built um, that relationship with them first. I just wanna say thank you for having me. I enjoyed the presentation and um, again, thanks. Thanks for having me talk about my experience and Cam's experience in Hawaii it was very, very, a moving experience, so thanks. Thank you so much, um, Mahalo, and thank you to our participants for joining us today. Thanks for all you do. We will continue to please complete the evaluations. We do read your suggestions. We bring you topics and uh, speakers that uh, are uh, you know, relevant and will add 
uh, richness and wisdom to all the work that we do. So thank you again. And until next time, goodbye.